the filthy criminals who have hijacked Western civilization have been the ones behind spraying very fine particles of what people think are aluminum into the atmosphere. Welcome back, friends. If you take a look down to my right, well, other way, if you take a look down here in these pictures along the top line, you can see some examples of where this is going. You can see airplanes spraying it. And it's well known, even the prices, the pilots are being paid by none other than, well, the man himself, Bill Gates. Microsoft's Bill Gates. Why is Bill Gates uh, behind allegedly spraying all of this into the atmosphere? Supposedly it's to combat climate change but before that it was just a conspiracy theory until he got you know until they made it this far well what's the real reason because they're still not telling you anyway in this particular video robert f kennedy jr is going to explain the dynamics of aluminum in nature meaning that aluminum just doesn't happen like iron it's always a, it's a molecule that's bonded to uh, silicate all right so it has to be refined and collected all right and then put into production now they're going to explain it in relation to the tests that they're taking and they can't figure out exactly how this stuff is making its way into the environment through soil testing And really, it comes back to pointing to this program spraying this aluminum oxide into the atmosphere. Or aluminum part particles, at least. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you. But this is where we're going with this particular uh, uh, video in this sense. Because this clip is very oh so important. Especially in the grand scheme of things. When it comes to who's behind it because you hear a lot of they because of course if you if you name names too much uh, uh, you get taken down you get censored in that circumstance so you've got to purposely be uh, a little bit more general you've got to be general and, el and elusive in this circumstance nonetheless this little clip is a four minute clip and it's a keeper and that's why i'm bringing it to you please leave a comment in the section below Let's get it going. Is it mainly, I mean, the, the frightening thing about this, and I know that there's been many, many tests now that are showing accumula uh, accumulations of, of aluminum, even in places in very, very remote parts of the earth, I mean, in the soils. And it's hard to explain why that would happen. And, and people should know this, that aluminum um, was never a, a free molecule prior to the World War II era. Aluminum, uh, all the aluminum on Earth is bound into silicate. And so it wasn't like there are many, many other metals like iron, et cetera, that are in the seawater and that, um, and zinc and magnesium, et cetera, that, um, that, are, uh, that are free and biologically available. But aluminum was was really not biologically available prior to World War II, prior to the, and particularly the airline industry, um, when aluminum smelting became uh, very, very widespread. And then, of course, the aluminum got into our cookware, it got into uh, aluminum cans, it got into, um, you know, food storage, etc. And we now know that aluminum gets stored in the brain. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. It has a high association with Alzheimer's and with many, many other brain injuries and other injuries. And, um, and so it's kind of frightening to think that somebody may be putting large amounts of bioavailable aluminum into the environment I'm spraying it in, in microscopic particulates uh, from airplanes. You're completely correct on every point. Thank you for bringing that point up. That aluminum does not exist naturally in the environment in free form, always bonded to other elements. And we now have lab tests from around the world 
all of which contain some level of aluminum. That's what brought me into this fight. When I began to lose massive amounts of my solar power uptake, I, I spent my whole life trying to get out of the smoggy Southern California, moved to the Pacific Northwest, built this off-grid home. I was losing huge amounts of my solar power uptake from whatever these aircraft were emitting, which I knew could not be condensation, not to block 70 or 80% of my solar PV uptake on some days. And that doesn't mean there's an 80% reduction in overall light. It just means you, you have to have direct sunlight for solar panels to function. I began to test my precipitation, did not want to find that primary element of aluminum, but I did. I continued to test my precipitation. In the course of 18 months, the amount of aluminum in a single precipitation event went from 7 ppb Highly parts per billion too. To 3,450 ppb in a single rain event. That's highly toxic rain. So much aluminum is falling in our region of Northern California. It has altered soil pH values from 10 to 12 times toward alkaline. Rain pH should be about 5.6, 5.6 based on atmospheric carbon loading. We're seeing now 6.6. Six, 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 eight, in some cases, we're testing the individual precipitation events, the precipitation that is very high in aluminum. It's actually pushing the pH value toward neutral. And the in regard to where else that might be coming from, because that's a question people ask. Maybe there's some industry across the street from me or so forth. We if the pH is off, then the, the, new, the plants that grow our food can't absorb the proper nutrients. And you're just getting a shell of what looks like a tomato with a quarter of the nutrients. We know from CARB, California Air Resources Board, that when they're testing from the aerosols from China, Japan, Asia, there's nothing between us and them. And CARB studies do not show aluminum migrating across the ocean. Mercury can, of course, because it converts to a gaseous state, but not aluminum. So where is that much metal coming from? And a final note, you're viewers, your followers, can watch the world's most recognized geoengineer, Dr. David Keith, who works for Mr. Gates, works with Mr. Gates, works for Harvard as well. It's about the fact, an uncomfortable fact, but it is a fact that we have the technical ability to do this. They are all fast acting, they are cheap, and they are fundamentally imperfect. They're the problems of how you control something where an individual country can have tremendous leverage over the whole planet's climate and where there are winners and losers in ways that, that really could be unpredictable. And I mean, not to frighten you, but I think you can imagine scenarios that lead to war. Yeah. So what do you have to say about that? Deniers. Let me know in the comments section below. Peace.